Welcome. My name is Michael Ellerbeck, and today we will be talking about Amazon S3 versus EBS versus EFS. I find it helps sometimes to conceptualize the service by looking at its service icon. This is S3. It stands for Amazon Simple Storage Service, and it's called S3 because of those three S's, Simple Storage Service. The icon for S3 is just a big bucket. S3 is intentionally built with a minimal feature set that focuses on simplicity. You create a bucket inside S3 and then store an infinite amount of data. Let's make a bucket real quick. Open the console, go to S3, and then click Create Bucket. This bucket name must be globally unique and start with a lowercase letter or a number. Click Next, 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 and Create Bucket. You can see that making a bucket is very simple. Instead of a traditional file system, S3 stores objects. In order to retrieve an object, you use a key. A key is the unique identifier for an object in a bucket. Every object has exactly one key. The next type of storage we are going to talk about is EBS. What is EBS? It stands for Elastic Block Store. EBS provides block-level storage for use with EC2 instances. It behaves like a raw, unformatted block device. So, unlike S3, on EBS you would create a file system on top of these volumes. Let's create an EBS volume real quick. So, fire up the AWS console, and since it's EBS and that's related to EC2, we're going to go to EC2. Scroll down to Elastic Block Store, go to Volumes, Create Volume, and then Create Volume. Done. It'll take a moment for it to completely create, and then next we would attach it to an EC2. Lastly, we have another type of storage called EFS. And if you haven't caught on by now, E usually is elastic, so this is Elastic File System. It's an elastic network file system. So, what is really cool about this is that multiple EC2 instances can access an EFS at the same time. This can provide a common data source for workloads and applications running on more than one instance or server. So for one example, we could have many web servers serving files from one EFS. Let's make one real quick. Let's go to our familiar management console. From there, go to EFS. Then create file system. We can just take the default name and hit create. And there you go. So to recap, we have Amazon Simple Storage Service, S3. It's a big bucket. It holds objects and retrieval by a key. We have Amazon Elastic Block Store, EBS. Block level storage for EC2 and file system on top of those volumes. And finally, EFS, Elastic File System, which is an Elastic NFS or Network File System with multiple EC2 instances can access an EFS at the same time. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this quick presentation on the differences between S3, EBS, and EFS.